Good morning. Welcome to the information session of the Export Market Development Grants Program. This session will focus on representative body tier and we'll, we will take you through how to prepare and submit your application through the EMBG online portal. My name is Nama Gunich and I'm Assistant General Manager here at Austrade, looking after the implementation and delivery of the Export Market Development Grants Program. Today with me, I've got my colleague, uh, Melissa Sikuleski, who is our System Design Manager, and she will be taking us through the online portal today. Melissa and I are in Sydney on the Gadigal land of the Aurora Nation, and we would like to pay our respects to the elders past and present um, and emerging. We recognise the enduring connection that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have with this land, and we extend our respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us on this call today, acknowledging their rich histories, cultures and contributions. Some housekeeping before we begin today. So if you're not presenting, your microphone and camera will be turned off and we will be recording this session today and we will be publishing that on our Austrade website very shortly after these webinars. Um, so you can also turn on the captions uh, for yourself uh, if you would like so to do so. But as I said, it will be recorded with captions also uh, published on our website. So as I said, this session is focusing on representative body tier, and we will be um, covering a number of um, topics, but mostly focusing on the online portal and the online application form. We'll do a quick recap on eligibility requirements for representative bodies, the grant amounts, and the opening date. We'll then go to the key steps to how to prepare to apply, we also have a video demonstration of the online portal and the application form for the representative bodies. And we'll also share with you some uh, tips around system requirements and what are those mandatory attachments that you need to have ready before we open to, um, to applications next week. We have set aside some time for questions and answers at the end. So uh, we'll use Slido and with the hashtag EMDG and we'll open that slide a bit later uh, towards the end of the session so you can post your questions there. But please uh, focus on, on the content because we may be answering those questions as part of the presentation today. So since the launch of the grant guidelines on the 13th of August, we've have done a lot of outreach activities and communications, as you probably are aware. Uh, we have delivered four public webinars and recordings of those are on our website. Uh, there, there were a high, like a lot of inquiries that we have answered and continue to do so through our EMDG help desk and also we had some targeted uh, information sessions with representative bodies who requested us to do so. Um, so the guidelines were released well in advance so on the 30th of August for you to prepare your applications and uh, refer to the guidelines and all the exemplar or sample documents that we have published on our website. So I'm hoping you have done so uh, so far to get ready for next week. We also encourage you to read the guidelines uh, as you as you are preparing your applications and watch all those videos. I think there's about 14 or 15 videos published on our website um, guiding you to the process or eligibility requirements. Uh, we are communicating all updates through the EMDG update newsletter. So there's 20,000 subscribers to that newsletter and um, it's growing. So if you haven't done so, please subscribe to that. And again, uh, refer to our website and also send us an inquiry to the EMDG help uh, at austria.gov.au. So eligibility conditions, as I said, just a quick recap. Um, what, what is new and what is different for eligibility um, requirements for representative bodies. Um, so rep bodies um, are playing a, a, an important part in the export market development grants program. Um, they are assisting their members, especially their SME members, to achieve export success. And uh, we, um, the, the EMDG program will continue to support, support them. Um, the objective of representative body tier is to uh, assist their SME members to become export ready, to create and develop and expand and diversify their export uh, activities in foreign markets, gain export marketing and promotional skills and support trade diversification. The grant amount for a representative body tier in round four of the program is up to 50,000 per financial year. And as you know, round four is opening for two financial years for 25-26 and 
So in each of those financial years, you can apply for up to 50,000. We have estimated about 130 grants that we offered in this year, and applications will open on the 6th of November next week. Um, so please get ready for that at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So as I said, um, the representative bodies have specific requirements. So you must be promoting interests of uh, a group of Australian uh, businesses or SME businesses. Your members are representative of an industry um, or a substantial part of an industry or more than one industry. The number of your members in your group is substantial uh, proportion of the members of that industry. So you have to basically uh, represent a significant proportion of that industry. Your members are exporting and ready to export the eligible products. And you as a body, you are not exporting eligible products or export of eligible products is not one of your primary activities. You also cannot distribute income to members or shareholders. So just, I guess, uh, referring now to um, Melissa, just uh, to take you through the process of how to prepare your application. Uh, but just to, to recap again, um, what has changed for uh, round four is that when we open to applications on the 6th of November next week, we will receive applications in that tier, in red body tier, in the order they are submitted and we'll start assessing them in the order they are submitted. And then we'll close to applications once we allocate that funding in that tier. So we no longer open and close in a certain period and then distribute funds uh, to everyone who is eligible. This has significantly changed in round four where we receive, assess, allocate grants and then close that tier as soon as that, as that funding is um, exhausted in that tier. We will be regularly communicating on our EMDG online portal, and Melissa will show us how uh, very soon. Um, but just um, to, to remind you, when you are preparing to apply, is um, important to check the online portal. Is the tier open? Is it still open? How much um, has been allocated? And also making that call whether you should be applying uh, if, if the allocation is nearing that, that um, uh, threshold. So a reminder is that the funding is limited in each tier and some applicants, even if they submit the application before the portal has closed, may miss out given that the allocation of grants happens in the order uh, of eligible applicants. I will now hand over to my colleague Melissa to take us through the online uh, portal uh, and the online application form. We do have a video that we will play for you as well, and that video will also be published on our website and on YouTube for you to access. Great. Thank you, Noma. Um, we will now showcase a video highlighting how to submit your online application form via the EMDG online portal. The video is a general overview of the form design and how to complete it. It does not go into detail or answering each individual question relevant to the tier you're applying. This is because every business will respond to each question differently due to the nature of their business operations or activities. The form is simple and intuitive. If you have prepared your answers and have your mandatory documents ready to upload, it should only take you about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. Before we hit play, please ensure you have your volume up if you have any technical issues in viewing the video on your end from the webinar, we will provide you the YouTube link in the WebEx chat that you can access from your own device. Lastly, a video disclaimer. In the video, you will see the online application form from our test environment. This may be slightly different to when the application goes live, and there may be some tweaks to the language. This video will demonstrate the EMDG online application form process. Before you start your application form in the portal, you will need to read the round four EMDG grant guidelines, download and familiarize yourself with the sample application form from our website, perhaps even pre-fill your responses in the sample application form where possible so that you can copy and paste them into the online form when it opens. Set up your digital identity and check if you can log into the portal. 
Prepare the supporting documents that are relevant to the tier you're applying for and watch the Get Ready to Apply for EMDG videos available from our website. All businesses and organisations must submit their EMDG application form through the EMDG online portal. The EMDG online portal login page is where you access the application form, see regular updates on the current and previous rounds, and host technical specifications and other relevant information. To access the application form, you need to log into the EMDG online portal by scrolling down to the middle of the page and logging in with your government digital ID. Your digital ID must be connected to the business's ABN that you will be applying for a grant. You can do that through the government's relationship management system, also known as RAN. If you do not have a digital ID, you will not be able to apply. So to get your ID, visit the homepage of the EMDG portal and follow the links to the ATO's registration page. Getting your ID can take some time though. So our advice is to set up your digital ID well in advance of the round opening. To log in, enter your MyGov ID email address, then select get code. A four digit code will appear on the login screen. Log into your MyGov ID on your mobile device using your 10 character password, fingerprint or face recognition. Enter or accept the four digital code in your MyGov ID app to continue. The EMDG online portal homepage is where you can access Austrade's export readiness test, Start your new application form. Access prior grant applications, grant agreements and milestone reports. Check the status of your current application, as well as where you'll be able to access your grant agreement and lodge your milestone reports when they become available. The application form is divided into five tabs. Each tab must be completed before moving on to the next one. You do this by clicking on Save and Next at the bottom of each page. We recommend that you save often so that your work is never lost. You can do this by clicking on Save here. You can also save and exit to, if you want to come back to it later. However, this does not hold your place in the queue. Only submitted applications will be assessed in the order that they are received. Questions that are mandatory have an asterisk. Validations and error messages will appear if questions are not completed correctly or you do not meet any eligibility requirement. Recheck your responses to ensure your application is complete and correct. You can also see which documents you need to upload. You can upload at each tab or you can wait until the end of the form. The choice is yours. Helpful information and guidance is available throughout the form in purple boxes. The eligible applicant tab is the first section of the application form. To start the application, you must read and accept the terms and conditions of use and confidentiality and privacy provisions. Simply click on the hyperlinks to access the information. The tab is divided into three sections, tier selection and eligibility, applicant business details, applicant business structure. The tier selection and eligibility section of the tab is where you select which tier you're applying for and answer other key eligibility questions up front. The form has been designed to validate if you're eligible to receive a grant under the tier you have selected. It checks your prior grant history to see if you have applied for EMDG before. It also has validations in place for other questions. 
As a representative body promoting your SME members eligible products, you must select up to 10 markets from the drop down list. If you only apply to deliver or arrange the delivery of export training, you can select not applicable. The applicant business details section has certain fields that are pre-filled from the ABR and ASIC websites. For example, the date of commencement. It is in this section that you'll declare that you're tax compliant and be prompted to provide us with evidence to support your declaration. The applicant business structure section is where you provide us with the details of any related companies, name of all company directors and partners, and if you're a First Nations organisation. The eligible tier tab has been designed to ask you questions that are specific to the tier you have selected. It is in within this tab, you'll answer a series of questions that will determine if you're eligible for the T and be prompted to upload supporting documents to prove your eligibility. As a representative body, you must select the activities that you'll be conducting on behalf of your members. If you're undertaking new export promotional activities, you'll need to answer the questions below, plus upload a copy of your memorandum of incorporation, articles of association or constitution, and your latest profit and loss statement and balance sheet. If you're providing export training activities, you'll need to answer the questions below, plus upload a copy of your memorandum of incorporation, articles of association or constitution, your latest profit and loss statement and balance sheet, and your export training plan. The export training plan is a mandatory template that needs to be pre-filled prior to the submission and uploaded with your application. You must use the template that is available from our website. Remember to review your responses before you click and save next. The plan to market and eligible expenses tab requires attention to detail. This tab is divided into three sections, plan to market, eligible expenses, optional questions. The plan to market section is where you must provide unique, high quality and specific responses to your business. All questions are mandatory. They must be completed with sufficient detail and must directly relate to your planned export promotional activities. You cannot submit plan to market responses that are copied from another business or submit generic marketing plan responses. If you do, your application will be deemed ineligible. Representative bodies planning to undertake export marketing promotional activities on behalf of their SME members must complete the plan to market questions. If you are a representative body only providing export training to your SME members to help them become export ready, you must upload an export training plan and are not required to respond to any plan to market questions. Your responses in the plan to market section can be up to 3000 characters in length or approximately 500 words. If you have pre-prepared your response, you can copy and paste your response in the text box. The planned eligible expenditure table is a mandatory section that must be completed. To do this, select the category or categories that you plan to spend the grant money on and fill in the respective amounts. The total planned eligible expenditure will be automatically calculated in the table as the sum of the amounts you entered for each planned eligible expenditure category. It cannot be more than the double the maximum grant amount for the tier, that is $100,000 as a representative body. 
The total grant amount sought is an amount that you enter. You tell us how much you want to receive each financial year. The total grant amount sought per financial year is to be calculated as 50% of your planned eligible expenditure up to the maximum grant amount per tier, that is $50,000 for a representative body. You can only receive a grant for eligible expenditure and you must match the total grant amount sought with your own funds. Please double check your total grant amount sought and ensure that you can match the grant amount with your own funds. The table has system of validations and error messages will come up if you enter amounts greater than the amounts allowed. You must declare that you can match the total grant amount sought with your own funds and you will not spend the grant funding on ineligible expenses. The last section of this tab is the optional questions. Your responses to the following questions are optional. Answering these questions will help Austrade understand your business's overall export readiness as outlined in Austrade's Go Global Toolkit and potentially offer other trade services. Remember to review your responses before you click Save and Next. To be eligible for a grant, you must have an eligible product. It is in this tab that you select and identify the eligible product you are seeking to export or promote to overseas buyers. You can select multiple categories of eligible products. You'll be asked to provide a comprehensive description, remembering you can copy and paste your pre-prepared response. followed by answering a series of questions relevant to your product. If you're promoting goods made outside of Australia or services other than tourism services, you'll be required to upload the respective submissions. Templates for these submissions can be found on our website and it is strongly recommended that you prepare and complete these prior to the round opening. The application finalisation tab is the final section of the application form. It is in this tab that you provide all supporting documentation if you haven't done so in previous tabs. The bank account details of your business or organisation so we know where to pay your grant. The details of the primary contact person. This person will be responsible for accepting the grant agreement. Your website details or social media channel link. And a declaration that you must read, acknowledge, understand and accept by entering your details. Lastly, you'll be asked to acknowledge that Austrade does not accept incomplete applications and that you have re reviewed your application for completeness. To review your application, simply go back to the first tab and check each of your responses and click Save and Next at the end of each page until you get back to this tab where you can click on the Submit button. Upon clicking on the Submit button, you'll be directed to the Application Confirmation page. This will confirm that your application has been successfully submitted and you can download a copy of your application form as a PDF from here. Be sure to check your inbox and spam folder for an email that provides you with details on your successful application submission. If you do not receive an email within two hours of submitting your application,
please contact AMDG Health immediately. Should you require any technical assistance whilst completing the application, please contact AMDG Health on 132878 or email us at amdg.help at austrade.gov.au. Thank you, Mel. This brings us to the end of the video. Um, I've noticed there's a number of attachments that you have already uh, spoken about in the video. It would be good to recap, just for clarity, what are those mandatory attachments that were presented by the applicants and how many documents need to be uploaded? Sure, not a problem. As per the grant um, guidelines, 6.4.2, attachments for representative bodies and the sam sample application form, there are seven areas that stipulate attachments are required. We will address these seven documents that are required, noting that plan to market is no longer a separate attachment. And as per the example document on our website, the contact content is to be added in the individual section within the application form. To ensure you have the correct number of documents, we'll take you through the requirements for each eligibility criterion and the number of documents that are required to be uploaded. So firstly, you can see financial statements are required for a representative body, and it's only for one year. But within that, we need two documents, one being your profit and loss, and the other one being your balance sheet. We also need evidence of your tax compliance for the past um, two income years. So things like your business activity statement, notice of assessment, or your statement of account. And that, once again, is from your last two financial years being 2022-23 and 23-24. It is in this section that you're required to upload two documents. We also need um, evidence that you're an eligible representative body and you have that status. So we need a copy of your memorandum of incorporation, articles of association or constitution. One document is only required here. And then finally, it's your um, export training plan. So if you're someone that's providing export training services to your members, we need a copy of um, the template that you have pre-filled um, at the time of your application. And once again, this is one document that needs to be uploaded. Other mandatory attachments um, that depend on the type of eligible product that you have or your entity type include things like your goods made outside of Australia or services provided outside of outside of Australia. Okay, these again are one, um, one document each depending on the type of product and the entity type you are. Templates for these can be found on our Austrade website as well. Highly recommended that you pre-fill these templates ready to go when the, when the round opens. Also, if your representative body is operating as a trust, you also need to provide us with the trust deed, including any amendments. And that again is one document. So just in regards to system requirements and to make your application process easier, prepare your mandatory documents to prove your eligibility. The documents will vary by the tier, including things like bank statements, balance sheets, business activity statements, and so forth. You'll need to attach these documents to your online application. When we ask for a specific document, you can only upload a single file. Our advice is to scan or join multiple pages into a single PDF document. Therefore, all documents must be uploaded as a PDF. We do not accept screenshots and they must be under 10 megabytes in file size. It's important to have a stable internet connection. So make sure you have your Wi-Fi or a high quality data connection when completing your application online to avoid any disruptions. We also recommend that you use a desktop, desktop computer um, and not a mobile device. Make sure your Google Chrome or Microsoft internet browsers are up to date. And the minimum screen resolution is um, 1,280 by 800. It just makes the form look be feel better, look better, and you can actually see everything within that. As you would have seen um, on the video, the online portal will have a table, which you can see on this screen. 
and it will be updated throughout the day once the application is open. The table will display the percentage of funds that have been allocated by tier and provide a status update. Once funding has been exhausted for that particular tier, the portal will close and this will also be shown on the table. Thanks, Mel. Thank you, Mel. That was very informative. Um, I have a question for you around um, those mandatory attachments. So will the form uh, prompt you to upload your mandatory attachment and are there validations in place for that? Yes, yes there is. So what will happen is, as the video mentioned, you can upload at each individual tab or you can upload at the end in your finalisation tab. You will not be able to submit your application form if one of those required documents is missing. Mm -hmm. It will actually stop you from submitting. Mm -hmm. So there will be validations, um, particularly in that finalisation tab, and that's where um, if you forget something, it will prompt you to go and upload it from that mm -hmm. particular tab. It's also important, as you said, uh, for um, applicants to review uh, the document. So uh, where we see the document is uploaded, but it's actually not relevant document to that question, or there is a mistake or a page is missing, we won't be able to go back and request you to resubmit it or provide it via email or, or um, you know, in any other way. So please uh, make sure that those documents are relevant to the questions, they're mandatory, using our mandatory templates. And what's also important, uh, we have published our exemplar plan to markets but the actual questions uh, for the plan to market are uh, embedded within the online application form so you can pre-prepare the answers cut and paste them in the into the online form that's very important to uh, to note given that we won't be going back to applicants to clarify or ask for the for, for you to give us more information during the assessment process that's right and just one thing also that I'd just like to mention in regards to your um, supporting mandatory evidence that you do upload mm -hmm. the file names need to be uniquely um, labelled and named, having the same file name for two or three of those documents will actually um, be rejected from the online system. Mm. So, for example, if you're uploading a balance sheet, please upload it as balance sheet 2022-23 for the first year and balance sheet 2023-24 for the second year. Mm -hmm. So you can't have the same name for the two documents. The system will not let you uh, submit. So very important. Thank, thank you, um, Mel. Um, we re as I said, we received a number of inquiries from grant agents and applicants uh, across the various years uh, and most frequently asked questions around the system, especially around uh, bank statements and uh, what is the most recent bank statement. We do acknowledge that different banks in Australia provide statements on different um, time periods, six monthly, quarterly, monthly, uh, but we need to see that bank statement that is official from the bank, your mo most recent one from 24 uh, um, this year, this calendar year, and then uh, your upload please also another document which is also mandatory uh, that shows your transaction history in November prior to you applying uh, in, in your tier or in this representative body tier. So that's important, two mandatory documents to substantiate that, uh, that you have uh, 20,000 uh, in the bank. For representative bodies, that is not uh, a requirement, but we're just flagging that we, because we know some people uh, have asked that question in this in the, in the WebEx chat uh, just earlier. Um, okay, so other other questions that we are constantly asked as well in in the in the FAQs is the is the word limits, and I know the video was quite clear. So can you repeat that again, uh, please, Mel? Yeah. What, is, what are the word limits or character limits for each question in the application? Form? Sure. Um, so in the plan to market section, um, and anywhere that basically requires a descriptive um, response, we have up to 3,000 characters in, in there. That means that it's approximately 500 words. Character limits, unfortunately, though, also include full stops, spaces, bullet points, and so forth. Other areas um, that... I think there's about two sections. Um, we'll only have about 1,500. Um, however, majority of them do have 3,000 characters in limit. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty decent amount, and mm -hmm. 500 words is generally about one page. Mm -hmm. Um, for a response. Yeah, which which is giving you sufficient, um, I guess, amount of characters uh, mm. for you to address those questions given again, it's important to have a high quality plan to market or a high quality um, export training plan uh, for representative bodies. Again, high quality is described in the guidelines of what it means. So we won't be accepting um, really high level plan to markets with a few words or high level information. But they need to be uh, addressing each question uh, and there should be sufficient detail for us to to assess that you 
you are planning strategically and you're ready to, to export or uh, support your SME members to diversify and expand or undertake training activities, I guess. Um, other questions that we're also getting is about the system load. Obviously, representative body tier is a smaller tier, and that is the reason why Austria is opening to applications for that tier first. We can uh, accept um, applications in that tier. Uh, as I said, around 130 grants will be offered if every representative body applies for the maximum grant of 50,000 per financial year. If that request is a bit lower, then obviously we can offer more grants in that tier. We'll keep that tier open until we exhaust the funding. So we won't be uh, moving the money across the tiers. That, that's also another frequently asked question. Um, and we'll also allow for some buffer uh, to, uh, to be submitted for us to be able to replace ineligible applications or grant agreements that are not accepted within the 21 days once we offer you that grant agreement uh, to be able to offer uh, those people on that buffer list as well. So all of this will be communicated to you in the EMDG online portal as Mel has outlined. So as you are preparing to apply, we open on the 6th of November, look at that table. It will be updated throughout the day or that week very regularly for you to see how uh, the allocation of grants is happening and are we uh, close to close the, that tier and when it's closed you will see clearly that um, we are no longer accepting applications in that tier. If you happen to submit an application um, uh, I guess before we close that is not guarantee even if you are eligible uh, that you will be successful in receiving the grant offer because the funding is limited in each tier. We are doing a terrorist testing of the system. So as I said, red body is a smaller T, it's going first. Uh, it, will, it will give us time to adjust anything if something happens. But we are getting reassurances for our, from our system colleagues that the testing is going really well, no major concerns, not at all, uh, for the high volume demand. Um, and we also have another week until we open to the larger T's later on on the 12th of November. I just um, would like to highlight as well, um, some of you may have already received some type of communication from um, the ATO in regards to the MyGov ID name changing. Mm -hmm. um, so MyGov ID will be changing to the name called MyID. This is purely just a name change and a branding change um, for the ATO. The functionality behind logging into that um, the MyGov ID um, app and so forth and accessing our portal remains the same. Um, so, yeah, it's just a friendly reminder that if you do have that correspondence or if you do see some type of change to your app on your mobile device, um, the functionality behind that um, remains the same and this has been confirmed with the ATO. Mm. That is right. Uh, for any questions around a MyGov ID or My ID, please refer to ATO. They're leading this this branding update or uh, any setting up or linking your MyGov ID or my ID to your RAM, uh, to the business RAM, please um, uh, contact ATO for their advice. They have also advised us not to, um, uh, I guess, communicate anything in relation to MyGov ID because they, they own that platform and that product. So please do so. There was a question on Webex earlier around submitting an application from overseas. Uh, again, that is a question for ATO, uh, whether that would be um, contravening with any you know, mm. security uh, that they may need for my Go ID. please contact um, uh, ATO for that. Um, in the previous webinars, we have uh, warned you that setting up a MyGov ID can take some time. So hopefully by now, you all would have that uh, set up and ready to go next week. And you can easily just jump onto the online portal now and um, basically just go in and log in with your MyGov ID details and so forth, just to test whether or not you can actually get into the portal. Um, it's highly recommended that you give it a go now, as opposed to waiting on, you know, waiting for the last minute on the actual day of opening the application form. And while we are at the ATO, another most frequently asked question is um, tax compliance. So uh, EMVG requires you uh, in any uh, grant program uh, that you probably um, are aware to be tax compliant, to, to comply with Australian taxation laws. ATO manages that, so Austrade is not providing tax advice, um, but we do require you to provide evidence that you are tax compliant in the online application form, so Mel has outlined uh, what that type of evidence is for the previous two income years. So um, the EMDG rule section 13 talks about uh, that you must be tax compliant in the previous two income years and in the current financial year. 
the types of evidence that AG advises that we can ask or request of applicants is your um, notice of assessment, your statement of account, or your business activity statement that is most recent in the in the 23-24 if you haven't yet lodged your uh, tax return for 23-24. So again, ATO will advise you if you're tax compliant and what, what type of evidence you can upload with your application form. So maybe we can now open the Slido, uh, hashtag EMBG. We will try to answer some questions that were sent to us via WebEx while that we were presenting, but very happy now to uh, look at the slider questions. Thanks, Norma, and thanks for the questions that have come through so far on Slido. Um, we'll start with uh, one about the application form. So if an applicant is having problems with the application form, who can they contact? Thank you. Thank you, Sally. So. Um, on this slide here, you can see the various channels that Australia has open for you to read the information, find uh, the support there. So emdg.help uh, at austria.gov.au is the help desk uh, that will be supporting applicants throughout the assessment, uh, the application process. So 132878. We are extending the opening hours from the 6th of November for the EMDG help desk for, from 7 a.m. in the morning to 9 p.m. in the evening. So we can't do 24 hours, but it has been extended. Again, Australian Eastern uh, Daylight Saving Time uh, on the 6th of November when we open. Wonderful. Thank you, Norma. Uh, a question about when the recording of this webinar will be available on the website. As soon as possible, so our team will work uh, very you know, swiftly after this webinar to publish. Uh, but uh, the video of the online um, portal is already published on YouTube channel and it will also be published on our Austrade uh, website for you to access. Thank you, Norma. Um, a question about what's the review timeframe from application submission to grant decision? Mm -hmm. That is a very good question. Thank you. So we will be assessing applications in the order they received, as we said. So from 6th of November, our team is ready to start assessing. If applicants are not eligible, they will hear about the outcome straight away. Uh, you can also log on onto the EMDG online portal and look at the status of your application, whether the assessment is in progress and whether there is an outcome. We won't be issuing grant agreements to successful applicants until uh, late in January for a good reason that we acknowledge uh, we're opening late in the calendar year. There is Christmas and holidays happening um, and we have 21 days for you to accept the grant agreement. So for those that are eligible and successful, we'll be uh, getting offers from us uh, from uh, late January 25 and then, you know, so on during February. And then you will have 21 days to accept. Once you do so, we will issue with a, uh, we, we will ex execute that grant agreement that will be available in the online portal. And then from July 25, we'll start making those initial payments to low risk um, applicants. Thank you, Norma. Uh, a question from an EMDG consultant. Can I apply for a rep body on my portal that I've been able to do over the last few years? Maybe yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, so um, EMDG grant agents who have previously um, applied for EMDG, the functionality to apply um, has not changed. It all remains the same as long as you have your agent code. Um, and if you don't, if you don't have any of those details and so forth, please contact our emdg.help um, contact centre um, or call 132878 so you can get that agent code. But the functionality behind actually applying as a EMDG grant agent has not changed from previous applications. All the yes. Thank you, Melissa, for that clarification. Uh, a question about uh, the application form that's currently on the website. I have already prepared uh, based on the sample application form for rep bodies that was on the website, but it looked like there was less questions in the form. Is that correct? So, Basically, the, what the portal demonstrated or the video demonstrated was a general overview of the application form. We did not actually expand on every single question. So what will happen is when you actually do go into the online application form, all those questions that are on the sample application form that's on, available from our website will be there on the actual application form online. 
There may be, as we mentioned before, a slight tweak in the language, um, but it's not a substantial amount um, of different language or anything like that. The questions primarily are exactly the same as to what the sample online application form is. So yes, the, the video is showing the navigation and all the tabs, Correct. but we didn't have time to take you through every single question and, and uh, spend time in, in showing it. Um, the sample application form is probably 95% or 98% exactly identical to the online form. Uh, obviously, as we were doing the, the, the testing, we may have fixed some terminology. For example, there was a typo in one of the questions around the trustee ABN. Uh, which we have now changed to the trust ABN, and thank you to the brand agent for pointing that to us uh, recently. So that has been fixed in the online form. Uh, also, the form interacts with the ABR, so the information right. will be pre-populated depending on the applicant's ABN and the type of entity applying. Thank you, Nirma. Uh, I've got a question about can we go through how the goods made outside of Australia um, apply for a representative body? So if, um, if you are promoting uh, eligible products on behalf of your SME members as a representative body and that eligible product is, is a good made outside of Australia, you need to complete a template and upload with the, with the application form addressing all those um, questions in that template. So it is not for all their bodies, it's only for those that are specifically promoting on behalf of their members. Thank you, Nirma. Uh, a question about how many years can I apply for a grant? So again, your grant history plays a role. Um, uh, for SME members, but for representative bodies, there is no yearly limit. In round four, you can apply for up to two years for uh, activities to be undertaken in 25, 26, and 26, 27. Thank you. And a similar question, uh, are there restrictions on representative bodies uh, in applying for a grant if they have previously received a grant? There are some changes to, to the eligibility requirements. So you don't have the eight year rule, for example, that, that is not a restriction on representative bodies. So you can keep applying. But there, uh, please, this is an eligibility question that we are not addressing in this webinar. But just quickly, please refer to the guidelines section on requirements for representative bodies. There are new requirements for you to outline what is new in terms of new activities that you are proposing to deliver to support your SME members. So it can't be business as usual or exactly the same activity that you have been undertaking over the past how many years. Uh, so when you are completing the plan to market or the export training plan, you will be asked, what are you doing now? And what is new or different that you will be doing in um, 25, 26 and 26, 27? Thank you, Nirma. Uh, a question, can you apply for multiple grants under round four? You cannot apply uh, for multiple uh, grants as one organisation because uh, applications are linked to un your unique ABN. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about uh, what do we mean by an agent code for consultants? So Mel has outlined that uh, to be a registered uh, grant agent for in EMDG system, you require your unique code, and that has been around for some time in EMDG. So please call us on 132878 if you don't have that code, or send us an email to emdg.help at australia.gov.au so we can issue you that grant agent code before uh, we open to applications. And then there is a process that, uh, I guess, how you apply on behalf of your client. Uh, you need to uh, link your ABN yes. with your um, RAM to that business. So um, the, the, the quality incentive program that was a feature of the reimbursement scheme is no longer uh, a feature of the new EMDG program or round four. So we are not endorsing any grant agents or consultants, but they're still eligible to represent you and receive that code and apply on your behalf. Also noting that if you're successful, the primary contact of the applicant business 
must accept the grant agreement. So the grant agent cannot do that for you. And we are entering into a contract with the applicant, not with the grant agent. Thank you, Nirma. Uh, a few questions coming in on MyGov ID. Uh, I know we mentioned earlier that uh, MyGov is obviously uh, managed by the ATO. Um, we'll raise some of these questions and see um, whether we can answer them here or whether they're best referred to um, the Australian Taxation Office for further advice. Um, can someone apply while travelling overseas? Again, there was a similar question, can I apply from overseas? That is a question for ATO. It's about a connection and security that you need to, um, uh, I guess, confirm uh, with ATO. Uh, you can try, but we, yeah. we can't, uh, we probably I wouldn't recommend if something no, goes wrong, it's... especially the way how applications yeah. are coming in. Because yeah. the MyGov ID app is on your mobile device, mm. um, there is security features and so forth um, that the ATO has applied on that particular app. The full details and how that app actually works, we highly recommend that you get in contact with the ATO office mm -hmm. um, because we don't have those technical specifications um, and we can't actually advise of, you know, what mm. they are and so forth. So mm. jump onto the phone um, and get in contact with the ATO office to see how that MyGov ID app or My ID app um, actually works overseas and so forth. Mm. Thank you, Mel. Uh, a question about the maximum grant amount that you can apply for. Can we just reinforce what was covered earlier? Yes. Yeah. So for representative bodies, that is up to 50000 per financial year. So that is the maximum. Uh, you don't have minimum in the rep body tier. Uh, we are recognising that you're not for profit organisation, so, but you can apply for up to 50000 each financial year for two years. Thank you, Nirmar. Um, a question about how is the substantial part of the industry assessed? What evidence needs to be provided to demonstrate this? So we are asking you to, uh, to submit um, the representative body uh, submission, uh, articles of association, uh, memorandum of uh, incorporation, etc. So all of that together, we will look at uh, in also the number of SMEs. You asked in the plan to market as well to outline how many SMEs are you representing from what, what industry. So the onus is on you to describe to us uh, who you are as a red body, who are you representing, and answer those questions in the application form. We can uh, obviously review your annual reports, your websites, uh, look at what you previously provided if you're returning uh, applicant um, in the red body tier to assess that. Thank you, Nirma. Uh, and also just for clarification, uh, financial statements, profit and loss and balance sheets, are they only required for one year or two years? Yes, we're asking representative bodies to provide for one year. Um, given that rep bodies uh, don't have that uh, requirement to be established for two years, that SMEs must be, at least. So, um, and most of representative bodies in the program we do know are returning applicants, so we have some uh, information on file uh, from them. So, uh, that is why. So, only for one year. However, tax compliance is for two years. Thank you. Uh, we had a question about uh, where to get the sample application form. We've actually just added the link into the WebEx chat, but I'd also just remind uh, participants uh, to go to austrade.gov.au forward slash EMDG. That's where you'll find everything with regards to round four, including the guidelines, the round four application form and our plan to market exemptions. So really recommend everybody goes to the website uh, to ensure you can access all of those samples, but it is uh, there for you in the chat if you'd like to access it from there. Maybe a couple more questions before we close? Absolutely. Um, I am the SME that exports goods made in Australia. Can I submit my own application in this category? If not, when can I submit the application? So uh, you cannot submit in um, representative body uh, tier. 
So the, the right tier for you will open um, on the 12th of November, depending if you're new to export, T1, or you wish to expand within existing markets, T2, or you wish to diversify into new key markets um, for T3. So that is opening on 12th of November at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Wonderful. Thank you, Noma. I think that covers the questions that we've had submitted. Um, as we've mentioned, MyGovID questions should be directed to the ATO specifically. Um, but I think that covers everything. Thanks, Noma. Thank you, Sally. Um, and I would like to thank Melissa for very comprehensive information on the online portal. Uh, we look forward to opening that next week. We are deploying that into production very shortly. Um, obviously, you cannot see that uh, in the portal if you go now. That will be available from the 6th of November from 10 a.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Um, so... Uh, please uh, call us at emdg.help uh, uh, if you need any further questions answered. We'll publish this recording very shortly on our Austria website. The videos are available uh, along with a lot of information on our website by tier, uh, including a checklist preparing to apply all the exemplars and the sample application form and other guidance videos that we have already published. So we wish you all the best and good luck with um, submitting your applications and thank you for your time today. Thank you.